What's going on guys? So today we're going to be changing the oil on uh, this 2016 Mini Cooper Countryman. It is the S. So first thing you're going to want to do is drain the oil. So you got to get your oil can. Make sure it has at least 5 quart capacity. Throw that under there. And uh, just lift the dipstick to where that air can get in there so you can get all the oil out and uh, you want your car to be up high enough to where you can get underneath, underneath it so I put it on this on these stands that you can drive up on and make sure your park parking brake is engaged which I did tools you'll be needing are this star key for the air filter, it's a T25, a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a 5 16 Allen key, half inch extension with a swivel, half inch ratchet, and the socket that you will need for the oil canister, which is way deep down in there. I'll, sh I'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, whenever we get to that, I'll tell you what size it is. I kind of forgot what size that is. So I'll let you know on that, what size that is. So first thing, let's drain the oil. A uh, 5 16 Allen key with a half inch drive, I mean a, five, a 3, eighth, 3 eighth inch drive ratchet. And it's usually pretty loose. And there she goes. People who say full synthetic oil can't get dirty. This is full synthetic oil right here, so, yeah. Oil is just about done draining. It's just leaking a little bit yet. And like I said, that is full synthetic oil. The same I have here. Um, this was, that was in there was 5W30. I'm using Penn's oil. You use, your, use the oil that you want, but that's what I use. Uh, full synthetic 5W30, I believe, was in there. And uh, I bought 5W20 now, so since it's winter, just so the oil is thinner, warms up faster. And uh, yeah, so let it drain out. Next step is to get the air filter out while it's draining and uh, oil canister. Next thing you want to remove is probably this little hose here. It's just a, uh, a little clip. Just push it off. And then you can grab your... T25 star key and there is three screws along the air filter here there is one here one here and one there so let's remove those right quick well you don't remove them you just loosen them it's pretty simple pretty straightforward I'll just loosen. I'll just screw them loose till they're till they just spin freely, and then I'll pull them up a little bit and screw to where they get out of the way for whenever you put it back in there. And then to get this guy out, you just pull towards you, and it pops off. Really simple. Then your air filter is underneath it, which is pretty simple to take out. And there she is. It's not too dirty. I mean, it has a few bugs in it, but pretty clean. So let's drop the new air filter in there. And if you are going with a Wix filter, uh, the part number, I think this is the part number, it is 49728. So let's put our brand new clean air filter into the car. Same process as taking it out. You just push this up and then just slide it on in there. Sometimes it's a little bit of a tight fit for a fresh air filter. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. Push it down a little bit there, else it'll be a little hard to put the 
cover back on. And then you just simply leave this screw here. This is what I'm talking about. That's why I do this here. Because the screw goes down here and then it's in the way of getting in there. But just lift it back up. Pushes right back in that notch right there. And tighten down those screws back up. I do not tighten these very much, I just nice and snug. Filter's done. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is remove the oil canister, and that is sitting behind, underneath this coolant box. I guess this is the overflow. Um, it sits underneath there. So I'll show you how to get to that. It's pretty and simple. That is a 10 millimeter. If I can find it on here, it's a 10 millimeter socket. And I just use my 3 8 inch drive. And to remove this overflow tank, all you do is pull from the bottom up like that. And then you can bend it out of the way like so and then your air filter canister I mean your oil filter canister is right there that is the socket size you will need so I will go check which size it is and I'll come back to you guys okay and to remove that you're gonna need a 1 and 1 16th socket and uh, I use a deep socket I don't think you would need to and then your swivel and then your extension all right, and the, I found the easiest way to do this is to put the socket extension or swivel, then extension, and then before you put the ratchet on there, go in here. I'm just gonna use your right hand and push it onto the socket. Then grab your wrench, make sure you're loosening it. Attach it to your extension. And you should be ready to loosen it. And she is loose. And it will make a mess because it is a canister and it is kind of tilted to the side. drop it that is just great anyways there she is got the canister out all full of oil awesome and if you're going with wicks like me the number is 57 512 and inside the box you get your oil canister and a bag of goodies and in this bag You have a fresh o-ring that goes over this oil cap, oil canister cap, and this tiny brass ring that replaces the ring on the oil plug, drain plug. So what you want to do is get this old ring got a uh, o-ring off of here you may need a knife for it to get it started you 
comes off like that. That is trash. Throw on the new one. Some people always say you have to put oil on these before you put them on there, but I don't believe in that, so I don't do that. So there's the brand new O-ring, or whatever you want to call it, gasket, seal, whatever. I think it's an O-ring. And then you want to just, it doesn't matter, these are, you can't put these on wrong. They're here. You can put them on either way. And you just push it until you hear a snap. Thought I heard a snap. Maybe the other way. There it goes. Probably off camera, but oh well. And now it's fairly tight in there. You can spin it. And then it goes back into here very carefully and correctly. Make sure the threads are not cross-threaded. Hand tighten first. Get your apparatus to hook it back up. Is that even right? Apparatus? I don't know. Hook up your socket set your wrench to tighten and I never tighten it very much especially with this big old ratchet you don't want to over tighten it. You can feel when it gets tight. It's fixing to get tight. Right now it's still very loose. See there it was. And just kind of just a tiny bit past the turret. It's nice and snug. Take out your socket and your reinstall your overflow, which I think this tank is empty for some reason, should not be, but it's pretty simple, it has two clips, or two, yeah I guess it would be clips, this goes on top of, and then you just push it into a hole in the bottom, and then you put the screw back in there, And now we are ready to pour in the oil. Alright, and uh, I wiped down my drain plug just so it's not too oily. And removing this brass ring is really easy. You just throw that away. And you grab your new one. And one round, one side, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's a little bit rounded. This side is square, this side is rounded. And uh, I always put it to where that the square side is on the top, on the bottom of the plug. So now we're ready to screw this guy in. And my... it's still leaking a tiny bit, but that's fine. 99% of it is out, so... Tighten it with your hand. You can wipe off the excess oil if you want to. Then get your and then you want to go get your ratchet and your Allen socket and tighten it. And you don't want to tighten it too much. I mean, it's. I have never tightened it very much and I've never had a problem with it leaking. If you do have a problem with it leaking, just come back and uh, re tighten it a little bit. Now, here we have so much sand, so all this oil here will just evaporate basically. And now we are ready to pour in our oil. We have the drain plug back in, 
fresh air filter, canisters in and tightened. And you can remove this top cover here if you wish. Um, I usually do so I don't get oil on it. Which, I mean, you can see how dirty my car is. And uh, don't worry about it, it's fine. I'm not a perfectionist. And I live in Texas where it is very sandy. And this is the Countryman, so if it can't handle a little bit of sand or some dust on top of the engine, then uh, I shouldn't have this car in the first place. So, what you want to do is take this cap off. I cannot believe how, how dark this oil got for being full synthetic. It's ridiculous. And then you want to put, I just have one of these that I bought off of, I think it was also O'Reilly's or maybe Tractor Supply. I just stick it in like that and I hold it while I pour in the oil. And like I said, I've been, I'm going to be using Pennzoil 5W20 full synthetic. And um, they always, I think at the store, they always say you need about six, um, a little, well not six, but five point something quarts. And I've never had to use more than five quarts exactly. So I'm not sure if I have that much sand in my <laughs> engine or if it's whatever, but time to fill in the oil. I normally do not use full synthetic oil, but in this case I do because this is a turbo turbocharged engine and they are a little bit more fragile than my farm truck. So now we just let the oil for sure get to the bottom, pull out the dipstick which is right here and uh, check the level on it. Which I mean as thin as that oil is it's going to be at the bottom already, so let's go ahead and check and see. How full it is. Put that to the side. Pull this out. Wipe it down. And Minnie, if you're watching this, which I hope you're not because this is a pretty sorry video, I'm sure. Um, Y'all need to figure out a better way to check if you have enough oil in there. It's very hard to tell with this thing. I guess you have these little holes that if they fill up, it's good enough. I'm not sure. I don't know how full it's supposed to be. I haven't really checked, but let's dip it in and see what it looks like. Okay, so, I mean, there's oil all the way to here. So, let's do it one more time. I think this might be, I don't know what that is. I don't think that's your marker. I think it's supposed to be anywhere from in between this little bump to there. This is probably caution already. Yeah, it seems to be right about up to there. And uh, as soon as you turn the engine on, the canister and some lines will get full. So that'll be good enough for the oil. You can't even put it on there wrong. Perfectionist probably built this car, which is probably a good thing. All right here it tells you it's supposed to use 0W30, but I'm in Texas and it's never that cold enough. All right, this guy goes. It's kind of difficult to put this guy back on there. Well, not difficult, you just gotta do it right. And there she is. And then remember that you took this line off here, so you wanna put that line back into this ring. 
And time to reset it on okay. that side. And then once you got your oil changed and everything, you can get inside your car, start it, and hold trip OD. And this will pop up. This is what you need to have serviced. So then you press and hold again. And it should say reset. And it did not. Let's try this one more time. Press and hold. Let's try this button here. Press and hold. Okay, there it is. And you release and then you hit press and hold again. And then you get that little clock and it'll show it's been reset. And then you just continue on. These are all your services that it wants you to do. And you are done. So hope this video was uh, decent. Give it a like if it helped you out. Um, and let me know down in the comments if you want more videos, more vehicle videos. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.